Welcome to another part of Sparrow, Reignite really Trilogy. This time we are doing Sparrow 3, or Sparrow Year of the Dragon. Which, honestly, I find to be the most fun of the three. So, uh, let's watch the intro cutscene, and begin this game. Stop her! <laughs> we managed to capture the eggs, Your Highness. Every last one. Excellent. Maybe you will amount to something after all. Now go guard the tunnels. Stop anyone from coming through. Where are the eggs? The holes came out on the other side of the dragon worlds. We found some of the eggs, but they were too heavy to carry back. The other side of the world? The Forgotten Realms. Spyro, you'll have to go. Nobody else can fit down the holes. Yeah, come on, let's go! Find the eggs and bring them back, Spyro. You're our only chance. You got it! Yeah. And here we are at the very first home of the game. So, Spyro 3. This is like, you know, uh, Insane Trilogy. This would be where the controls of the game will basically be like this game. Uh, in the original. So, sun Sunrise uh, Springs. This is the first home world, and it's pretty simple. There's also a lot of skill points here that are repeated uh, in levels, which means we'll be doing more than one skill point in a level. Uh, there's also, I think, a bit less more skill points in this game, too. But don't worry, we got achievements, too, which do have some new things we have to do, which are dumb. But we'll do them anyway. Also, yeah, we have uh, essentially, you know, we've got we've gotten some skills, unfortunately. But luckily, some of those skills will never come back uh, to haunt us with this game. I, I believe the ladders are not going to be here anymore. Also, these are new collectibles: eggs. We have to find dragon eggs now. There are no orbs. There are no dragons to save, and. There are no um, talismans to find. It's just eggs. So we're back to our usual sort of collectathon stuff here. And uh, here's Zoe right here to tell us some instructions. Hi, Spyro. To look left or right, use the right stick. 
To quickly center the camera behind you, tap the center camera button. You can also look all around by pressing the action button. Thanks. And now it's time to meet the new character that only a Jutsu is inspired free. So, you're the one in charge of rescuing the eggs, huh? <laughs> How sad. Look here, dragon. If you know what's good for you, you'll turn around and crawl back into that hole you came through. Those eggs belong to us now. And I've hidden them in places you'll never find in a thousand years. Besides, even if you could find any eggs, our expertly trained armies would hunt you down and take them back. Do I make myself clear? If I find you here again, I am going to be very angry. And you won't like me when I'm angry. At the very least, the voice actor for Bianca is pretty good, but I did notice some of the lip flaps are a bit off. Anyway, it's time for the first level of Sunny Villa, because... We're basically going to be trying to go through every level the way they're intended and such. Which means that essentially we are trying to complete through each home world again. And it's going to take about two parts for each one. Yeah, luckily it's not going to be stupid like before. But we had like one home world that took three parts. There are four home worlds luckily. So it's going to be more spread out. But yeah, now for the first level. Which... Anyone who's played Spire 3 before knows very well it's Sunny Villa and involves these guys right over here. Oh my, oh my, can you help us? Hordes of ferocious Rhinox have overrun our town and kidnapped the mayor. Yeah, once again, they're going for more like, you know, genuine sort of accents and not the goofy shit that was in the original games. And I believe it's going to be a lot more apparent in this game because in this there was a lot of goofy voices and I feel like they're not going to exist anymore in this remaster. Anyway, the camera's still a bit awkward and the control's still a bit awkward as well. It's not exactly expire free, unfortunately. But yeah, we're going to save this guy right over here and get a bit of dialogue. We showed those two bullies. If they hadn't outnumbered me two to one, I'd have finished them off ages ago. Uh, of course you would have. But yeah, I guess the one problem is that with Reignited, the controls are different from the originals. Because Crash, I mean, fucking Insane Trilogy was Crash Free Controls. But this, I don't know. This is sort of its own unique controls due to how the swimming and such was. Which, by the way, is still the exact same for Spyro 2 here. This Rhinox is too big to charge. You'll have to flame him using the attack button. Okay. Well, you know, we already know how to use fire. We already know how to choose a charge. And also, it's still goofy as. Because, you know, this game was essentially made for kids. Which, apparently, a lot of the Spyro fans seem to have forgotten about. Because they're dumb. But, uh, yeah. This game, I honestly think, is the best one in the trilogy. Because Spyro 1, I mean, is very basic, but it was like a stepping stone sort of thing. And Spyro 2... Uh, Spyro 2, it's just... It's not that good, guys. It's not that good. Spyro 3, however, had a lot to it, and luckily was pretty fun. And also these little rewards here of the dragons, the little, you know, dragon eggs here, and the little animations you get from these guys. They're a lot more fun than the talismans in Spyro 2, the fucking orbs in Spyro 2, and of course, even the dragon in Spyro 1, because the dragons, when all you get is thank you for releasing me a whole bunch, it just becomes shit. By the way, this game has something very unique to itself, which is this. Yeah. So, it basically tell us who our main villain is, which is called the Sorceress. That's her actual name. And yeah, we have allies in this game. Playable allies. Which, uh, you won't be seeing me play the first playable ally until next part. That's on purpose, essentially. But, yeah, uh... This is honestly kind of interesting, because it does add a different kind of gameplay style every time you play these characters, which is actually very nice. That being said, some of these characters don't really appear again after Spyro 3. Some of them do. Some of them become, uh, 
pretty regular reoccurring characters, much like Hunter and such. But not all of them. Quite a lot of them just kind of disappear forever. Also, it would have been nice if the egg sort of like dropped down and broke or disappeared alongside the dragon there. But okay, yeah, just blink out of existence, that's fine. I will say that uh, apparently Spyro 3 is the most broken in this trilogy, in the uh, Ragnar trilogy, so that's not good news. Also, these bushes I'm taking fire on, this skill point. Hi, Spyro. Each time a fairy zaps you, like this. It means your progress has been saved. If you get into trouble, you'll return to the last place you got zapped. Yep. That won't become a reoccurring joke. You know, him getting hit with the wand. And also there's a little cutscene here. Well. The chicken is dead, guys. The chicken is dead. But, uh, yeah, that's just a random cutscene that plays, and I don't think you ever get that again. Those little random cutscenes after this level, I believe everything just makes sense. But yeah, I've burnt all of these, and I've also taken care of the Norks, so I got an achievement for doing that. So it's also this guy. Thanks for the help, but I think I could have worn him down sooner or later. Yeah, no you wouldn't. And right behind this guy here is literally the freaking exit and also i don't know if these guys had norks but whatever so here we go thank you for rescuing our town as mayor i awarded you with one of our famous giant chicken eggs thanks melio except it's a dragon egg that's what we are rewarded from now on as well as these characters as well i'm sorry that was the ugliest chicken i've ever seen nice but yeah, these characters like Mary, Mary Leo here, you actually kind of unlock them as well because the way you actually get to go to the next home world involves these characters. So yeah, you don't just get collectibles here this time to get to the next home world. You actually have to get these characters freed. Oh, by the way, time for some skateboarding, which is also with Spyro 3. Hey, Spyro. I found this gladiator training arena that also makes for a pretty cool skate park. Care for a test of your boarding skills? Sure. I bet you can't catch all 15 lizards running around here. Just come back if you want some boarding tips from the master. Of course, Hunter. You keep saying that to yourself. Anyway, uh, this is the skateboarding segment to Spire Free. And I mean, they are extremely basic. You are not going to get any kind of Tony Hawk stuff out of this. I'm sure, you know, the people who come to see my Tony Hawk shit will enjoy this, at least. And the next time we do the skateboard in Spyro 3. Even though they're going to be only in small doses. Like, very small. Because they don't last that long. The objectives here are pretty basic, honestly. The first one is just to get these guys. And, you know, there's 15 of them. And they're all pretty much lined up in a certain way where you can actually get all of them pretty quickly. Uh, it's just that, unfortunately, we are a little bit slower. Maybe a little bit faster. I can't really tell of the speed of the skateboard this time. All I do know is that spinning around and turning around, it's a lot more loose than the original. I will say that much. There's not uh, any kind of gradual uh, movement to the turning and such and the spinning. Instead... It's just immediate. You're just like flying immediately. There's a lot more speed, which ultimately does make it harder to control. But it could be worse. It could be worse, you know? But yeah, sometimes it seems like the uh, skateboard is faster than the original, and sometimes it's actually slower than the original. Like right there, I would have been able to take care of these two guys immediately uh, before they even had a chance to do their jumping. That might be because these guys. And the way they act is a lot more different, maybe. Maybe it's because of the fact they're not, like, slowing down their jumps and such. Like in the original. Also, there is one little problem with skateboarding. Uh, crashing. In Spyro 3, this game was an asshole of the crashing stuff. Like, it will punish you easily. But in this? Nah, you're fine. You just jump on a wall. 
good to go. You can still move. It doesn't crash you. So, I guess you can call this the game being more forgiving. I call it the fact that they hit the touch in this game with the skateboarding is a lot more wrong. I'm not going to fault the game for it, though. It does make this easier. But, uh, when we get to the trick stuff, oh, God. Hey, that was great. And while you were boarding, I found this in a lizard burrow. All right, then. We got Emily. I'm not going to say all their names, by the way. You can read it yourself. All right, time for the second egg from Hunter, because he's obviously holding them. All right. If you can catch all the lizards before time expires without wiping out, I might be able to scrounge up another egg. It's not going to be easy, though. Of course. Go get him, Spyro. So, yeah, like always, Hunter's holding hostage some shit until we, you know... Show how much of a bro man we are, you know? Trying to get all these guys again, but in under three minutes without bailing once. Which, I mean, you just saw that the bailing here is a lot more harder to do by accident now. But, I still hate how Hunter is such an asshole. Like... I think we can all admit it at this point that Hunter is an asshole. He's not really that trustworthy if he's just going to be, like, holding hostage a lot of the stuff you actually need. If he already fucking has them. Like, bit of a dick. Bit of a dick. But, uh, yeah. This is much easier than the original because of the fact that Bailing is... A lot more forgiving than the original, so you won't get fucked too much. And also the fact you are kind of varied in speed, so... In a way, you might be faster, might be slower in this one compared to the original. Not too sure on that. All I do know is that this was a lot more easier for me to do than the original. Uh, just because of the fact that bailing is just so much more looser now. So, yeah. Sweet. And look, there was another egg in the lizard burrow. Okay, so that was Daisy. So we're done here, right? Well, no. There's one more thing we have to do here. Hunter? You can go for the course record now if you want. Whenever you hop on a skateboard, a timer will start. Score as many points as you can until the timer expires or you wipe out. Good luck. Yeah, that last one you said there, not even true. If you wipe out, you can still continue on. Now, I had to redo this. I had to do it a second time because, yeah, the tricks. I honestly feel like they've given you less tricks now. This move here is still, like, the best move now. But, oh god... Yeah. Let's talk about how the turning in this game, when it comes to skateboard, is a lot more loose than in the original. Before, you had it was a bit more slower, a bit more floaty. Uh, and this one is a lot more force behind it. And it makes it faster. And it honestly makes it harder to control. It, it makes it harder to censor yourself because... Even in the original, uh, it's sort of like if you're kind of, like, hitting the center point, like your landing point, it will automatically sort of move you back into center point so you don't crash. Uh, not the case of this. <laughs> you kind of have to do it yourself because I have seen it where it just, like, sort of bails you if you're not, like, point for point exact. Especially if you're going backwards. Like, if you're landing, like, backwards... Yeah, it's... Kind of weird. Sometimes it will just bail you outright, and sometimes it will actually land the bastard. Like, right there. I would have failed there other times, but at that point, it let me land. Also... Yeah, getting the tricks to actually register is a lot more awkward. So... Yeah, they, they've made this more awkward to deal with. And uh, ultimately have made it harder. But 
honestly getting the skill point hit, which just gained the high score. You know, still pretty simple. There you go. So that's the skateboards have been done, and that is it for Sunny Villa. Even though we can't 100% it because we need our ally. Because remember, there are allies now in this, and the ally we need isn't freed. We'll get to that at the near end of this part. But, uh, yeah, as for any cutscenes that are going to play through this, there are no cutscenes. Unlike Spyro 2, where there's like a cutscene every intro and outro, uh, cutscenes only appear at certain points in the game, really. Otherwise, they are never in the intros and outros of these levels. So it's nice. It, it you know, makes sure it doesn't interrupt the gameplay, at least. It's just that, you know... The one problem I will say is that the controls here are going to be a lot more awkward because Spire Free, the way this game is designed, like in the levels, it some of the movement is going to be a bit problematic with how this works, but yeah. Yo, Spyro! I just found one of those portal thing in the jigs that leads to a different world, but you'll have to glide to get across to it. Press the jump button, then press jump again while you're in the air to glide. Just follow me. All right. So yeah, let's just glide already. Oh yeah, that. Okay, let's talk about that after this. Something shiny in that cave over there. Let's go check it out. You can get there by hovering. To hover, just press the action button at the end of your glide. You notice how I'm moving, but the camera doesn't. It has a delay. Yeah. Oh, I almost forgot. I found this egg. I got it now. I got the egg. I, I got Coltrane. But, oh god. The fucking cuts. The fucking camera when you're talking to people and such. And the fact that there's a weird delay. Which you can move from. And it's like... This is a super fly power-up, Spyro. Whenever you walk through any power-up that looks like this one, it will allow you to fly for a while. Okay, so... In the original, you could do this thing where you sort of, like, flutter upwards with the uh, R3 or whatever. I believe they got rid of that. So, you cannot cheaply flutter up and uh, sort of like extend yourself in a way on the time limit there and be able to land on a tree and get out of bounds or whatever. Nor can you do the thing where you sort of like glide, hit the right spot, and then just glide your way over. Uh, from what I found, it doesn't work that way anymore. It just automatically gives you the, vor the vortex once you get down here. Like I said before the Pirate 2, they fixed a lot of the bugs, which means a lot of the tricks are gone now. So there is a new bug here where if you move, just after talking to someone, the camera doesn't move with you, but your controls sort of get inverted in a way, and you could fuck yourself potentially from it, so that's a bit annoying. But I got that egg right there, and you can see on backwards from here. Uh, you can basically find yourself a life, and there you go. Now, I know Moneybags is down there, but I'm not going to talk to him yet. We will go see Moneybags and what he wants. Pretty much at the end of this part. But right now, we do have this new level right here, which is Cloud Spires. And another thing I'm awkward with is the design. You see, so far I haven't had much of a problem with the design of the game. Because I think they did a pretty good job. Spyro 3, though, I honestly think has the worst design, really. With the original, I mean. Because everyone has these faces. They have very open-eyed faces. And on PS1, it looks cute. It looks fine. When you modernize it, though, th it makes the characters creepy. And Cloud Spires is like the first time where you're gonna see that. The Rhinox have shut down our cloud generator, and I may never see a rainbow again. In a way, if it weren't for the blinking that appears sometimes, they they're fucking creepy. If my wings were big and strong like yours, I could easily glide across here. They got the thousand yard stare going on, guys. I I'm being serious. Like they just wide open staring at you. If it weren't for the blinking, it would be nightmarish. So, 
there's some points where I honestly feel like they could have, you know, changed the design a little bit more and not gone full on trying to keep with the design of the original. But they did. They went and they kept the design of the originals and it does not work in a modernized fucking like feel. It looks horrific. Anyway, Zoe. The metal armor those enemies are wearing protects them from your dragon flame. If you hold down the charge button, you can defeat them with your charge attack. Thanks, even though I already knew this from the get go. Anyway, I'm gonna just tell myself just right to get a good line going. There we go. So the enemies here are little guys of armored, which you just charge into them, and these guys, which you flame at. Even though they'll keep trying to push you back, if you tell yourself correctly and just jump over it, you know, you'll be fine. And yeah, there's a lot of fucking gen spread about. But luckily, no grass, so we can actually see them this time. They still can hide in certain spots. And right behind this guy is an egg. Which, for some reason, this egg is a lot more finicky than the original. Yeah, I... I sh the trigger spots are a little weird. I'm gonna say that right now. Even in the original trigger spots for those eggs were kind of awkward. And it was very noticeable that one glitch in the original, of that one level where you can just like uh, swim in the air, get to a certain spot, and you sort of get an egg or you like get locked up from it. It's, it's weird. And I don't get why the eggs have these weird hit spots, but hey, it's money bags. Let's go talk to him. The sorceress has put me in charge of guarding these bellows. However, I might look the other way if I was distracted. Counting gems. Uh, of course. Oh, yes. Precious, precious gems. Well then, Spyro. You may now use the bellows anytime you wish. Best of luck on your little egg hunt. Thanks. Yeah, Money Bags is a lot more of a dickhead in this game compared to Spyro 2. In Spyro 2, you might have felt some kind of sympathy towards him, uh, but not in this game. He is just an outright asshole. Remember, to get your longest slide, press the jump button at the very top of your jump, and use the action button to hover at the end of your glide. Yeah, Zoe here is also kind of annoying because she just gives you a lot of advice you already know of, and I mean, it's just not needed. Hunter already tells you this shit, so I mean, you don't have to come in here and repeat that shit to me, okay, Zoe? Okay? Anyway, we're near the end now, so let's go get our reward of, you know, an egg from this little cutscene here. Can get the cloud generator working again. The Rhinox must have been using this thing to clog up the cloud generator. Yeah, we got Henry. But now we got this guy here to help us out get to the next homeworld. So. That's two worlds done. That's two levels done. And now we have two bonus areas, which are what these vortexes are. In the original, you get this little walking animation before you actually get into the area. Here, you just jump cut. Which, you know, is a bit of a downgrade, really. But whatever. Okay, so this one. Our sun has gone out. We can make a new one with our lava fusion cauldron and three sun seeds. But they keep burning out before we can get them in the pot. Yep, the sun Step seed. On the switch to get a fresh sun seed and keep flaming it until you get it into the pot. So, the sun seeds. They are pretty easy, honestly. They always stop at certain points, so if you know those certain points, then just get to them, flame them, you're good to go. And yeah, I mean, this is honestly pretty simple. The third one might get you a little bit, but I don't think so, honestly. I feel like there's a lot of leeway in this where 
you can manage getting for this next problem. So yeah, the sun seed stuff. Pretty simple, honestly. The other bonus area, though, they've made it worse with how the controls are of this game. They've made it a little bit uh, unfairly hard in a way to start off with. Well, I'll talk about that when we get to it. But right now, here's the last sun seed, which if you don't know where the sub points are, you might get screwed up. But uh, yeah, if you do know, then it's pretty basic. And there you go, we did it. Now that's what I call a sun. Here, you can have this last sun seed as a souvenir. Think it might be a dud though. Mm, it's not a dud, it's Lulu. Okay, so. The other bonus area. You already know about how the flight works, right? The super fly power up. You know how in the original you have like a bit of a big jump before you start gliding? You know, to give you the height you need? Well, in Reignited. We usually wake up our rain cloud at the crack of dawn, but these mischievous spirits are stopping our bells from ringing. Let's just say in Reignited, they just make you go immediately. You don't get that sort of, like, build-up speed that you get in the original. You just go full speed in the flight immediately. Which honestly makes kind of, you know, preparing for this and aiming a bit of a pain in the ass. So, um, yeah, if, if you know what you're doing, you can easily, like, fuck this up. And, uh, you know, you have to go all around and get that first guy. But otherwise... If you get just right, then this is going to be the same thing as always, honestly. Do you want this doodad? It fell out of the belfry. Thanks. Right, there is one other thing that we have to deal with, and it is the thieves. Because they are back from Sparrow 1, guys. And they have our eggs. It's not the, you know, the little eggs, though. It's the eggs we actually need, the dragon eggs, for complete 100%. So, there we go. That's our first one of Brian. Right, the other problem of this... Sparks. <sighs> sparks. You already know that Sparks is a bit of an asshole at this point. Considering he isn't good at, uh, you know, finding these gems. Well, they've made him worse. They've made him much worse. Because, depending on the area you have gone out of, if there are no gems in the main level, uh, Sparks wants to, you know, direct you onto a, a little bonus area for a remaining gen you might have missed. If you did not enter the correct bonus area where the gem is, and you went out of one where you clicked, got all the other gems in that area, uh, he just points up to that area. He never goes to the correct area. He misleads you. And by the way, just to show off right now, if you believe that um, the exit area thing is going to work here, where you like, you do a bit of a hover, and from there, you get enough height to do a glide and be able to skip going for the normal way for this bullshit. No. Because there's no build-up thing, so it doesn't work. So here's me going for the correct area. Which is honestly pretty short and easy. I've got 10 lives, by the way. But yeah... Sparks just starts misleading you at this point because of the bonus areas. Which, um... That's not good. It's not good at all. Because at that point, you have to then find these yourself. Which means going through every bonus area to find the one gem you miss. Because Sparks is so incompetent all of a sudden. That's... That's pretty fucked. Gotta say... 
And that's pretty gay. You gotta say that as well. Anyway, let's get our gem, which is not up there, which Spox is pointing at. It's actually back at the Sunseed area. So, yeah, I missed this. There you go. Be careful of that, because uh, Sparks is an asshole now. Oh, and as for the achievement for this area, all you have to do is get up on this, then go left and glide all the way down over here. And you get your five second flight thing without falling into the pit. Like so. And there you go. That is Cloud Spires. Now. It is time for a cutscene, because once you complete two levels in the first homeworld, you get a cutscene. In fact, every time you complete about two or three levels in a homeworld, you get a cutscene, so be prepared for that. So here is what I consider to be the mid-homeworld cutscene for the first homeworld. Which, there is no text for this, so we're just going to just jump cut straight into the cutscene. <laughs> Look out, Hunter. It's the scary sorceress. I've warned you already. This place isn't safe for small dragons and pussycats. Oh, thanks, but I think we can look after ourselves. Try looking after this. <laughs> Come back when you finish witch school, okay? Say... Is it just me, or is she kind of cute when she's angry? Just to remind you, this is a kid game for kids. They added those sound effects. Wasn't the original, just music and such, but, uh... They, they made sure to let you know this is a lot more of a goofy kids game. With the sound effects. But yeah, that... That's just a little hint to the whole, you know... Hunter, Bianca, uh, you know, this little thing, which, it, it does become a real thing, but it's not too important, really. Not until the later games, which I know this isn't going like to remake. Active camera mode? If not, I can set it back to the passive mode. I'm good. Okay, I won't change it. Remember, you can change the camera mode yourself by using the options menu. Yeah, I'm using active. I'm not I'm not gonna change the passive. I'm, I think at this point, Spire Free is gonna be fine with what I got here, honestly. Oh, by the way, Head Bash is here too. Your abilities are still here, it's just that the game isn't gonna be using them too much. Also, there are locked levels, which require to get a certain amount of eggs, which I do have now. Except uh, this first guy here, his voice is a bit different now. Working again. Come visit me at the Tiki Lodge. Yeah, that's not the original voice at all. I see an egg at the bottom of this lake. I would go get it, but I don't want to get my fur all wet. Maybe you could get it. You can dive underwater by pressing the charge button when you're on the surface, and charge underwater by holding down charge as well. See, I'm a, I'm a little bit disappointed at the change of voice actor sometimes because. Tiki Lodge guy there, they've made him suck an Australian, which isn't right. Oh, by the way, the swimming here is as floaty and awkward as it was in Spyro 2 Reignited. So, yeah. There's underwater levels in this game, by the way. And we gotta use this control scheme in order to get through them. There's gonna be a lot of sliding around. It's gonna be awkward. Also, there are speedways here, but they require us to get a lot of these eggs. Which, I'm not getting this part. But we're not doing the speedways until pretty much when we get to the backtracking stuff. So, unfortunately, that's out of the question. Yay! My portal is working. I'll see you at the beach. Well, this one's... You know, sort of similar to the original voice, at least. It's weird. 
Sometimes they actually do try to have the original voice, and sometimes they just change it completely. Like, I don't, I don't get the direction of this one. It's kind of weird. Anyway, now it's time to go and see Moneybags because Moneybags these home worlds is only here to unlock our allies because, yep, he's locked them up in these cages. Spyro, my my, how funny to see you here. Why, I haven't seen you since we defeated Ripto in Avalar. <laughs> well, my business went into a slump after you left, so I came here and struck up a nice deal with the local sorceress. Lovely woman she is. Seems to be very fond of dragons too. I'm getting paid a fortune to keep Sheila the kangaroo locked up. <laughs> this pesky animal must have been causing a lot of trouble for that poor sorceress. I suppose I could accidentally let the kangaroo escape. If you were to pay me, say, a small fee. Of course. Here you go. Ah, Spyro, I love your sweet naivete. Your kind-hearted nature might be your downfall someday. But for the time being, it's making me rich. <laughs> I uh, hope you appreciate this favor I'm doing in letting you out. That's good of you, mate. No hard feelings, eh? Right. After all, I'm just doing my job. Yeah. <laughs> I reckon you'd be one of them dragons then. Yeah, named Spyro. Never thought I'd see one. You dragons used to rule this entire world, you know. Then all of a sudden you left. Poof! Dragons used to live here? Didn't you know? They say it was over a thousand years ago, I think. And they just left? Yeah. And the weird thing is, after they left, all the magic in the world just sort of went with them. I mean, they say this world used to have magic coming out of the wazoo. Flying ships, singing forests, wishing stones, you name it. But when the dragons left, it all just dried up. Is that why some of the portals don't work? Yeah, they're starting to fade out too, one by one. Well, I gotta get back home and do some damage control. Come visit anytime you like. So that was Sheila. Every single fairy just fantasized the shit out of her once she was revealed for Reignited. It's weird. Anyway, we'll be going through Sheila's level as well as going back to the first level to deal with Sheila's little bit there, as well as going through all the other levels we just unlocked next time in Spyro 3 Reignited. So, I will see you then. Thanks for watching.